Greetings and welcome back to Weird Wizards Winter Wonderland! Yes indeedy! Although it has been many months, well, two months maybe? Uh, one and a half months, something along those lines. Since I was last here in the Winter Wonderland, winter continues apace here in the world of medieval engineers. And so I have returned for yet another build, yet another interesting build, at least I think so, because look, you can see it over there. It's a cable. That's totally a cable, right? It's not a piece of wood. Um, just trust me on this one, all right? Because, of course, the bob carts here, they're great fun if you can bring them down. I mean, you can get down sort of safely. I mean, I wouldn't say it's safe particularly, but you can certainly get down off the hill, but it's a bit of a slog to get all the way back up again. So I thought my, to myself, what do I need? What do I need? Well, some kind of ski lift slash cable car, clearly. A winter wonderland would not be complete without such a thing. Uh, and so I set about seeing if I could build one, which is a task that I have been pondering on and making various attempts for, well, quite a long time actually. In fact, going right back to the early days of the winter, the Weird Wizards Wonder Workshop, I made various attempts to get it to work. Well, now I actually have. Let's go and take a look. Uh, so you can see it goes all the way up to the top of the hill and to my kind of ski lodge thing at the top there, but it starts down here. So let's take a look. Just around this corner here, up there of course, is uh, Santa's sleigh, still in the skies above. It's been parked there now, I guess, because, you know, he's not going to have a need of it for at least another year or something along those lines anyway. Um, and this is it, look, this is what we have come to see. This is just like a nice little outside sort of area. I just, you know, I thought it was important to make it look nice uh, and to have like a nice kind of like housing bit here. And if we head inside, this is what we're actually here to see. This is the cable car uh, extraordinaire. And this isn't just any old cable car. Obviously, this is a wizard's cable car. So uh, we'll take a ride in it in just a second. We just have a look in here. Look, this is sort of like a little spare parts room. There's a few little spare parts around. You know, in case it needs to be repaired or something. Not that it's, you know, unreliable or anything. Well, okay, let's face it. I built it. Uh, and so it may be prone to the odd quirk and foible, uh, but we'll see, or we may see, if that happens on this particular journey. Let's go and take a ride. Uh, as you can see, I've got a little step, so getting on is nice and easy. Look, you just walk up, straight on. <laughs> that's just not incredible, is that? Yeah? Uh, okay, maybe that's not the incredible bit. Anyway, look, let's get this thing going. So, in order to move off, first of all, we have to raise the safety catch here. This is a very important mechanism that was relatively late in the design. Uh, I think I need to operate that and then just lift it up. So what we've got here is basically just a thing that'll catch on this little block. And you will see, or you may see why this is important later on. But uh, it was something that, that was kind of necessary anyway. And uh, the catch block just allows it to stay in a raised position, which is pretty cool. Now, as you can see, we have rope barrels on either end, which is sort of what makes it a cable car, even though I suppose it's probably more accurately described as a monorail or something. But, um, but, but... They're only to get us started because, of course, this is a wizard's cable car. So all we have to do is give this thing a little push and off we're off. Look at that. Now that we're moving, no more wheeling and we're just going. We're just away. Look, we're leaving the building behind us now and we're heading on up towards the ski lodge above. See? Look, it's pretty cool, right? Oh, sorry, I just passed through the camera. Now, it does rattle and bang a bit, but um, it's pretty safe. I haven't had it explode or anything yet. It does have a few little foibles. I actually stumbled on this magic kind of by accident. Um, I was trying to build just the sort of like mechanism above, and then I discovered that I had somehow managed to imbue it with innate magic. Hold on, we've got to get ready to activate the catch here. Activate the catch. Uh, okay, I think I may have been a little bit late with the catch mechanism, or possibly it is uh, just one of those things which is a bit foibly, um, a little bit uh, unreliable, which, let's face it, is pretty much the hallmark of my designs. So anyway, this is the way back down. Obviously, I meant for that to happen because I wanted to immediately show you the joy and wonder that is the cable car descent in all of its juddering and banging glory. It's 
quite a bit quicker than the way up because I guess it's got gravity assisting it and it's also quite a lot more unstable because of course, well, I mean it's got gravity assisting it and it's one of my designs. So it bangs around a lot but it hasn't exploded on me yet. Which I think is a good sign. Alright, so we've arrived at the bottom. Uh, the mechanism, the catch mechanism, does actually have the useful feature of not being ne necessary to be raised for the way down. Because it will kind of like just clink up of its own accord. But also, the cable car does actually reliably stop at the bottom anyway. So I guess it's not strictly necessary. Although I do have the little thing there so that, you know, it, it's like a safety net. I suppose. Not that I'm normally prone to, you know, building in safety nets and things, but this is actually the result of quite a lot of iterations over this basic design. I got like a, a core cable car going actually pretty quickly. Look, we'll go back up. Um, hold on, what's happened? We'll go back up, give it a little tug. Oh, of course, of course, the safety catch is still down. We need to raise the safety catch. There we go. In fact, hold on, there we go. Lock catch, raise the safety catch, give it another little tug with the rope drum. There we go, and we're off again. I'll, I'll actually turn around and you can have a nice little exit view as we depart. The, um, what would you call this? The, the, the cable car house? The cable car garage? The cable car abode, or boudoir perhaps, who knows. Um, and of course down there you can see Reem Thursa and the snowy cottage just emerging from behind that tree. Um, are we leaning to one side? Let me just check the mechanism. There you can see the wheels all turning away and using their innate magical awesomeness to drag us up the cable. It's totally a cable and not a piece of wood with a near infinite amount of tensile strength to it. Um, is, is that the correct engineering term? Frankly, I'm not entirely sure. I think it is if it were actually being supported from above, which it, it sort of is, but that's not the way it was built. Uh, but I'm sure we're leaning to one side here. Um, uh, does anyone else have that feeling? That feeling of being tilted to one side? It looks like all the runners are actually in place and operating correctly, but I get the distinct feeling that we have come slightly askew, and maybe that's why it didn't catch last time we were up. Maybe, in fact, it did catch and it knocked us askew. That might be a slight flaw in the design, if it is indeed the case. Let's see what happens when we reach the top, anyway. All right, we're nearly there. We're nearly at the top. Um, I'm getting ready to activate the mechanism. Hopefully we can like get past the little entrance bit here and lock it in place. And then we may have to conduct some kind of emergency repair. But don't worry, I know what I'm doing on this. Uh-oh, look. Yeah, we're definitely skewed to one side because the catch isn't even getting past the thing um, on the way up. Uh, but let's take a closer look then at these wheels. So basically we're looking to see if any of the wheels have come off the runners and are therefore pushing the whole thing to one side. It looks like that top wheel there might be... No, that's all right. It all, it all looks kind of okay, but it clearly something is not right here. But the whole thing is operating under... There we go, look! Uh, I think it was that wheel there. It was that guide wheel. But if we just um, repair this track here... This is the advantage of having a two-width rail slash cable, by the way. Originally I had a one-width cable, which kind of worked, but it... it a, it was a little bit more difficult to configure, and B, it meant that um, if you if you had an issue like this, you didn't have a, an easy way of getting the thing back on, whereas if you've got a piece you can simply delete, then that seems to knock the whole thing back into shape. But look, we can take a nice look as we guide alongside, look at all those wheels whirring away. Um, the more wheels, the better, I think. I've actually kind of settled on... Uh, four at the bottom and three at the top in this design. I could quite happily add some more, I suspect. Um, and although I don't know if it'll make it go much faster, it seems to add torque, which makes it more reliable for getting up to the top. I was, I was having slippage issues previously where it would sort of get about halfway up and then it would slip and that would like like move the momentum back and that would cause the innate magic to go into reverse and the thing would go back down again. And obviously I didn't want to get halfway down the mountain and then turn around and come back up again. I just needed to let that out a little bit there. That was um, I'd forgotten to to let the drum out after I originally used it to draw us up. So this is it, basically. This is this is my cable car design. I hope you like it. I hope I hope it is um, you know at least somewhat interesting for you. It's not very medieval, I will grant you, but it is definitely quite wizardy, especially with the sort of magical wheels. Um, we can take another ride up and just see if we can actually get it to catch at the top this time because. Frankly, I think uh, that would be better if we could. It would be nice to show you, like, you know, the little dock at the top and things. Whilst we're waiting, let's enjoy a little bit of music and a few beauty shots of this magnificent vehicle as it ascends towards the summit. 
Also, don't forget that Medieval Engineers is the last game in my Great Games giveaway, so for all you trans-dimensional beings who haven't yet tried out life in a Medieval Engineers universe, now's your chance. See the description below for details of how to enter. Ready? Not yet, not yet. Now! Drop it! And we've caught! We have caught! And we've done it! <laughs> we've successfully stopped here! Look at that! Look, we've done it! You see? You see how awesome the mechanism is? Honestly, I, I, I've added so many things to this. I had, like, it working in its most basic form ages ago, and I just kept kind of... You know, there was all these little foibles. Like, the, uh, the thing wouldn't stop all the time at the top, so I had to come up with this catch mechanism, and... And then once it had stopped, it, the question was, how did you get it going again? And for a while I had to kind of like run and bash into it to get it started again. So I added these rope drums to allow me to pull it up and down, which actually I think also adds to the overall look and makes it look that much more like a cable car. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with it, I have to say. I had to make a few adjustments up here at the top in order to facilitate its little dock here. So it comes in, as you can see, we've cut down on the sides of the little balcony area a little bit. We've also got this little lower area because sometimes, especially in the early phases, uh, I was trying to catch it with like a rope. What I would do is I had like a little rope catch here and a rope catch here and I would try and like quickly connect the two when it arrived. Um, which was pretty entertaining actually, but it was quite difficult to do reliably. Um, and even when you did do it, you then, depending on which two you connected and at what point, there could be a little bit of slack which often meant you would wind up down here. So that's why, that's why there's this secondary bit in case it, it doesn't quite come to a stop where I want it to. But it, it pretty much does now, um, besides those first few attempts that, that didn't quite work. Of course, now we're at the top, we have to be able to go back down again, right? It wouldn't be much good if it was stuck at the top here permanently. And there is a bit of an issue with that because although this catch will stop it from, from sliding back down, it is now effectively jammed. So, we have to attach this rope to this rope drum here so that we've got an anchor point, and then if we go back aboard, I can try and lift this up, but I suspect it isn't going to work, because it is basically going to be jammed. And it normally is jammed anyway, occasionally it isn't. Can I turn it? No, I cannot. You see, it is unturnable by the mighty strength that is, uh, myself, the wizarding medieval engineer. Um, so, what can we do? Well, not only does this rope here act as an anchor point, but also it's got a rope drum on it, so we can just pull the thing forward. There we go, look. Pulled it forward, it's now not like... We can pull it forward a little bit more even if we want to. Um, there we go, all the way forward. It's basically as far forward as it'll go. That's taken the pressure off. We can now raise this up. We'll have to do the catch block thing, obviously. There, like that, raise it up. We're now free and clear, and we can descend simply by detaching the rope. And we are away! <laughs> Farewell, Ski Lodge on high. We are descending back down to the valley below, or at least sort of halfway down the slope. Anyway, I could probably do one of these all the way to the valley um, floor, like down where the river is. Uh, maybe that's something to do for next time. I guess we'll see. I could extend it in some way, shape or form. There, of course, is the Bob's... The Bob Cart. I was going to about to say bobsleigh then. It is, of course, the Bob Cart run far below. Um, we, uh, we could always take a Bob Cart down if we wanted to as well, although... To be fair, you have to be where the ski lift slash cable car is in order to operate it. You can't just summon it from one side to the other. That that does not work, unfortunately, due to issues, of course, with the catch mechanism and such. But here we go. We come back into the cable car abode. I think that's what we decided to call it, isn't it? And, uh, and that's it, complete. It stops nice and happily at the bottom, to be fair. It doesn't actually need the catch thing, but the catch mechanism, but I mean, you know... Um, I don't know why, it's just the foibles of using magic. Let's take a look at the back section here. So this is the actual rope, in inverted commas. It is just a piece of wood, uh, which extends up and it comes off at an angle because obviously it's attached to that little pivot there. Um, this is sort of the counterweight side, and then once that was pinned, 
we could just keep sort of extending it and extending it and extending it all the way up here and it stayed quite happily actually all the way up now I did pin it at the top here as well just to stop it from shaking around and causing any issues for the car as it was coming up so there we go it's pretty good. Um, of course, there's a lot more I could do with this now that I've got the, the basic mechanism working. There's no reason why you couldn't have a significantly larger basket here. You do need these guiding wheels on the side, otherwise the whole thing will just come off and, and skew sideways and, and then it'll be and then it will be scuppered. Um, if we head down, uh, there is, we just head past, that was a um, that was an early test cart that fell off. Um, down here, this is where I was doing some experimentation and you can see a bit more clearly here, look, this is basically the same design it's slightly smaller and it's got less stuff and it's running on a single width um, but it's essentially the same thing so we just have wheels top and bottom uh, on on this beam and then wheels on either side in order to guide it and if you just give it a little kick look I have to, I have to stop flying for this give it a little kick and off it goes it's magic I tell you it's magic it's just awesome wizarding magic uh, but it is inherent in the way the universe works the universe of medieval engineers currently anyway so um, so no mods or anything required it just uh, it just does the job off you go and off it goes. I have to say, like I said, I was really thrilled when I first created the, the test rig and, and it just went zooming off on its own. I thought I was going to need to do the whole thing with winding or possibly create rotors or something to do it. Uh, but no, just pure magic is all that was required. So there we go. Um, a cable car, a working cable car slash ski lift in medieval engineers in my winter wonderland i'm happy with it i hope you have enjoyed it and maybe it's given you a few ideas of things to try out for yourself speaking of ideas if you have any ideas of things you want to see in the winter wonderland before of course winter ends and it becomes inappropriate at least for northern hemisphere dwelling transdimensional beings then do let me know uh, also don't forget the great games giveaway is ongoing now you can enter to win your own copy of medieval engineers the awesome the fantastic medieval engineers the draw will take place a week from now tuesday the 23rd of february so make sure you get your entries in by midnight gmt on monday the 22nd to be in with a chance to win but until then thanks a lot for watching everybody i have been weird wizard and i will see you later